thank you all for joining me today on Press Day for uh, Xmas, uh, premiering Amazon Freeview November 17th. What a great little flick. I watched it over the weekend with my wife. Uh, we enjoyed it. Who doesn't love uh, like one of those holiday movies that you're, you're laughing, you're getting a little sad at the same time? You know, who, who doesn't love those? Oh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it. I know that's the movies I love to watch and was lucky enough to get to make one. Right. So what are you hoping for when people tune in to watch this? What are you hoping they get out of this film? Well, deep down, I really want, and this is the first time I've said this to anybody, is I want somebody to watch the movie and then go in their phone and text their ex and say, let's sort this out and maybe get back together with their ex. Um, but at the same time, I also want people to be able to sit down with their significant other or their family and laugh with it, laugh at it, do whatever you want to do, but come together as a family, whether that's a traditional family or a modern family and and enjoy a movie, you know, for for in some capacity. Right. Not to give away too many spoilers, but uh, what kind of family invites their ex? I, I, what kind of family? What invites an ex to show? I know. Up. Well, you know, they keep, <laughs> when you keep in touch, though. You know, when you keep in touch with someone, and you're as kind as Jeannie Stroop. You know, yeah. she's always making sure is anyone hungry, is anyone need anything. And she's gonna. She knows Allie was a uh, orphan essentially. You know, doesn't really have a great relationship with her dad. She wants. She doesn't want Allie to be alone for the holidays. Right. Right. So the, the film was written by uh, Dan Steele. How was it collaborating with him? What kind of ideas did you guys bounce off? You're going to love this. Dan Steele and I met for the first time about a week ago because it was made during the writer's strike. Wow. So Dan and I were not really able to collaborate, which, you know, is a first, but certainly not first for me, but certainly not a first for the industry as a whole, where mm -hmm. prior writer strikes had a similar dynamic. Um, you know, so he had written a really rock steady script and uh, that script was ultimately purchased and put into production. And then the writer strike happened. And so my job was to take his text, the sacred text of Dan Steele and put that thing onto a screen. And so I, you know, him and I have become buddies now over text message, but um, yeah, we, we weren't really able to, but it was fun to be able to make his vision come to life in the production design and the tone and the music and all these things that come off the page, you know, as part of what he writes. What went through your mind when you read the script? Uh, what went through my mind was, how do what's my way in? You know, what do I relate to here? I don't have a big family. I'm from New York City. I've never been like I didn't, didn't grow up in a house. I'm Jewish. Um, what do I relate to out of all this? And I related to Ali and Graham. I related to a relationship that they hadn't really sorted their shit out yet. They're both very high achieving people. They're both very like, the kind of workaholics. Um, you know, I, I related to the family being in touch with the ex. I had always thought about keeping in touch with my ex's family. And I related to that. I also thought it was a really fun, just inherent premise that had a lot of conflict at its center. You know, there's a lot of conflict potential there. And so conflict, it makes directing easy. Right. You know, right. two people want different things. It's a very easy scene to direct when that's the motivation. You mentioned Allie and uh, Graham. How did you go about casting these two? What were you looking for during the whole process? I was looking for, you want people that look together, look good together on screen. You know, you want people that, that have the, you know, that when you, when they talk to each other, it feels as if they have believable chemistry, you know, uh, it's the X factor. Like at the end of the day, chemistry is X factor. It's undefinable. Right. You know, when you see it, you don't know what causes it. Um, I have my own theories. I, I think people that look together in, in rom-coms kind of look alike or they do right. something alike. I think there's some sort of like weird sibling alt energy that works well. Um, that's a hot take, but uh, they, they, they both just, you know, were really funny people and they're both also capable of being very emotional. And that's what I thought was wonderful about them. Throughout the the movie and everything. Uh, first of all, did you have a favorite character in the movie? Mm. I think that, my favorite character is Mindy. I think Veronica, played by Veronica, um, who is she's just so funny and and so emotional and so passionate. And I really love working with her. Her and I met on TikTok as TikTok friends. And I was like, hey, I think you're brilliant. Like, I would love to have you be in this movie. Um, and then everyone else. I mean, Michael Hitchcock was incredible. The mom is a favorite character. They're all my yeah. favorite. I fell in love with all of them. They're they're my family, you know? Is there a specific scene that you love to filming or like, Mm -hmm. Still sticks out to this day from this film. Yeah, we really loved filming the scene where they get to the pillow fight in the bedroom and then they start making out because they had been like, you know, messing with each other for a majority of the movie. And this was finally a scene where I could do the rom-com thing where they're like, yeah. 
you rit tat tat and then it's like kiss and then it's you know the lights and the camera and the shadows and then it's cut to the next day and it's morning and they're cuddling and i just thought that was like a really fun scene to direct it actually came out exactly the way i imagined it and i i loved that scene one of my favorite scenes was the hockey scene i think yeah the the hockey it's emotional too like at the end of that scene it gets emotional and that's a scene where they really brought it you know the camera work in the end of that scene it's just locked off on robbie's face and it's locked off on Catherine's face and that's because they brought so much intensity to it and for the hockey scene itself really fun to film i was out there on the ice you know with a little monitor in my hand and i had a wonderful cam op who was also an ice skater so she was able to sort of get in the weeds of it all um, and help make you feel like it was real. And obviously Robbie Amell is doing his own stunts there. He's a wonderful ice hockey um, player. And so he was able to do his own work. Yeah. Was there a scene that was left out of the movie that kind of like made you sad about it, but you had to leave it out? I would, well, I have a cameo that got cut. I was played, I played a delivery man who delivered off some Uber Eats for Graham early in the movie. And I brought him, you know, a half eaten box of, uh Chinese food that I had eaten as a driver on my way there. Thought yeah. it was very funny. It got cut, whatever happens. I think that the only thing left on the cutting room floor is sort of, you know, if I had more time in the movie, you would have seen more of the family dynamic. Cause I think the family is the most important part. I think some of the stuff about the family was left, you know, uh left in the floor. But I think people hopefully still get the magic of, of what their dynamic is. Yeah. Now uh, near the end, People have to watch the the ending of the clips and yeah. everything. Uh, is there a possible sequel to this? Any ideas of you and Dan spit each other? Uh, you know, th- there has been conversations about a sequel, and that's amongst the actors. And uh, I think there the premise is so strong that you know whether it's two other exes, right. you know whether it's like almost anthology or it's about the characters, you know about Mindy's character. Um, I think that that would be a really wonderful thing. I think it could also be interesting to see to meet Ali's parent you know, eat, meet Allie's dad and yeah. bring over um, the Stroop family over to Allie's dad's place in Hawaii. And then we get to go do Christmas in Hawaii, which would be great. Right. Last question, because it's you know, obviously it's a holiday movie thing. What's your favorite holiday movie? Do you have one? Yeah, my favorite holiday movie is a film called Hook, which is also my favorite movie of all time. But I also count it as a Christmas movie. What is your favorite holiday movie? See, I got a few. I, every year I go between National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, but I also mm. like Scrooge with Bill Murray. Oh, Scrooge is fantastic. That's just an amazing movie. Yeah. Doesn't get a lot of love. Doesn't get a lot of love for some reason. I love Scrooge. I also love that Nicolas Cage movie um, where he go, he's body swap. He gets transported. Um, gosh, I forget what it's called, but it's like the amazing man. I don't know. He gets body swapped. He was like a rich banker. And then he turns it back into like a homebody. It's incredible. But um, anyway. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Xmas, November 17th. I'm Azar Freebie. Thank you for giving me that study. This was great. Elias, thank you for the time, and uh, thank you for watching the movie. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks.